What's up, all my YouTubers? I hope you liked the, uh, the last video of the uh, car finally starting up. I know it's been about a year long, about a year since I started this channel. Um, finally got it running. That's a big step. I did take a couple weeks off because it was just like, ah, it runs. Huge milestone in anyone's build from the ground up. But there's still a ton of work to be done. Um, I did take a couple weeks off, like I stated. I uh, I, record, I, re I recorded a video about a week ago, and um, I did about four hours of recording, and I accidentally deleted about three hours and 52 minutes of it. Uh, I wasn't paying attention. I was going through my camera and deleting old videos, and I, I got them all. And it kind of sucked because I did a whole bunch of wiring in there to show you guys how to hook up your trans brake. Uh, your anti-lag, your bump box on a gold box with a um, 98 Jeep solid state relay. It's about 25 bucks. We'll see how long it lasts. I don't feel like spending $80 on a solid state relay or $200 on a MoTeC one or whatever the fuck it is. But anyway, <clears throat> so I've been getting everything almost done with the wiring. That is almost ready to put the dashboard back in. I got to run two wires for the wide band because I completely forgot the wide band gets a clean ground in the ECU as long as the 5 volt signal uh, what else I got a wire I got to put a ground on my wiper control box I got to run a wire to the back for the flex fuel sensor um, that's pretty much it I can't finish a couple things so I'm waiting on more uh, fucking uh, douche terminals to come in one day I'll figure out how to say that. I, I honestly don't even care. I was all out of two pins. I need, So I ordered a bunch of two pins the other day. Those come in tomorrow, I think, Amazon said. So ordered those. Uh, I made sure the flex, no, trans brake and anti-lag worked. That was a pain in the ass because I was using Nitrous 1 as an output. No. Yeah, I was using Nitrous 1 as an output, and it kept telling me there was something on it. I got to check something in my idle menu. Um, a friend online took a look at the tune and said there was something a little weird going on there, so he sent me his setup on how his is done. I got to check that out, but I have it on Nitrous 2, and it seems to be working fine, so I'll probably just leave it there. Um, I did bring the car up on the uh, anti-lag for a hot sec just to make sure it all worked, and it worked, so that was cool. I obviously can't test the trans brake because the drive shaft's not in the car yet. But whatever. Next goal is to get the dash in complete. All the heater boxes are hooked up. I gotta finish the vacuum for that. I need a vacuum can to put in the fender so all my controls work right. Get the dash in complete. Get the interior from the seats forward complete. Um, I obviously still have to take apart the trunk, mini tub it, do all that shit. That'll be in a later episode. But I want to get the dash in, I want to get the center console in, I want to get the shifter in, completely everything all said and done, working, shebang, great, ready for the street. And then I could have the glass guy come over here and stick a windshield in the car. Um, I don't want to put a windshield in the car until, obviously, that stuff's complete because it just makes it so much easier to work with it out. I will show you the trans brake slash anti-lag slash whatever I hooked up over here <laughs> so as you can see I got a uh, fucking weird looking relay there labeled trans this is out of a 98 Jeep Grand Cher Jeep Cherokee Jeep Liberty uh, I can't exactly remember but it is a solid state. The wire colors do not freaking matter. These are always wrong. I've seen three of these different re-rays with three different setups of wire color. But I'm going to show you what goes to what. So if you're looking, this is paying attention. So far left is your ground. This is your ground. Far left is your ground. All right. Next to that is your signal from the ECU. So there's green. Second one in. 
is your signal from your ECU. The black, which is the third one in, is your signal out to your trans brake. One, two, three, out to your trans brake. And four is your power in. So you got your power in, you got your ground, signal in, signal out. All right? So that's how that works. Finish my radio install. <laughs> that's why I probably don't, I have these connectors, I just use them. Um, so that's ready to go. I got speaker wires ran out to each door. I just got to put speakers in. Heater wires, good to go. Um, what else? I'm almost done hooking these up. I only got a couple left. Just a couple. It looks like pure freaking mayhem right here, but I have it all apart to make sure everything works. Um, we don't need this anymore. I don't have the issue. I need to be plugged in. Get rid of that. But it does look like freaking mayhem in here. Wires just everywhere. But I promise these will all get neatened up and uh, be on the back side of this panel instead of um, being all trashy in the, uh, the front of it. It's kind of a pain in the dick with some of these. Especially when, when you have one wire, something like this is my radio power. <laughs> um, I wasn't, I ran out of um, spots going to the back. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is just radio power. This was, I don't know what the hell happened here, how it got wired this way. Or why it got wired this way, but it did and it's kind of freaking obnoxious and I actually might I might just de-pin it from the plug and then I might actually be able to use that hmm I don't know I don't know what the hell happened here but anyway oh, this shit's all freaking wrapped up in here there's a vacuum line that's got to go to the check valve for the heater controls But that may mess just it looks <laughs> really bad, but it's actually pretty well organized. Um, I got one button hooked up to the steering wheel. My trans brake, this is the other one dangling is my bump box, which it's wired. I'm just waiting on a connector, so I don't, so this isn't hardwired in over here. So I could disconnect it. I saw that douche makes a thing where it's like uh, little screw-in holders that you could put it into a panel, which I'll probably eventually get. But uh, I want to get the dash and everything and see where they would land first. Uh, dog always messing around, doing something. Yep, we are pretty much getting ready to sling the dashboard back in this. So, that, I showed you that. Oh, what else? <laughs> I got my uh, horns on. Nice attention to detail and air people. Got my horns on because you know it's gotta stay a street car. Gotta have horns. I'm waiting on everything to come in for my steering. I ordered the other U-joint I needed. Other, it's not a U-joint, steering joint, whatever you wanna call it. I ordered offset rack bushings. I ordered a Team Z. Um, bump steer kit. Uh, I didn't get to order my steering wheel hub quick release. I was going to order the strange one from Racecraft, the bolt on one, because I still have a stock column in the car. It was like $230. Look at that. Um, apparently, the Grant one, it looks like a good style. It's not. It's a non pin. Um, it's like $130, and it meets SFI spec. So I was going to order that. I broke my two-week-old cell phone screen. That cost me $250. And then the heated seats broke in my Denali. And it just, just fucking my debit card got hacked. It was a shitty fucking week. So I ended up not being able to afford that. I'm going to order that this week. So finally this thing will be completely done with steering. And I'll actually be able to steer this whole car. Because it's fucking obnoxious with the wheels not connected to the rack. So we'll probably go over the install 
of that. We'll show you how to make the steering arm. I'm going to drop my column down maybe an inch, half an inch. I don't know. We're going to play with that. So I'm going to show you the spacers I have. So I got these uh, machined aluminum spacers. Actually, that one feels like fucking steel. I don't know how a steel one got mixed in that. That one's a steel one. This one's an aluminum. It feels heavy as shit. I'll put that one away. I got more. So I have these aluminum spacers, nice machined aluminum spacers. So I, I want to sit in the car, see where the steering wheel is. The, am I spacing down this much? Am I spacing down this much? Am I spacing down? You know, who knows? Um, right now the steering wheel is up too high for me because my seat sits on the floor. So I'll probably go with the uh, half, half inch ones. Those might do it all right. Play with it. Find out. All right, dog. I need to get in there. I know you hear me. Get out of my seat, please. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, let's go. Go to the other side. Come on, go. Come on, go. Oh, no, it's got the four, if you worked on a Mustang, it's got the four bolts, the four studs on the back side, which I wish uh, I tack welded in when I had this thing out, like I did the front ones, but I didn't, and it freaking pain in the ass. Um, the rack's sitting down about the column, I should say. Sitting down about three quarters of an inch right now. Half an inch in the back. I'm gonna see where it lands on the header to see how close it'll be with the joint. From what it looks like, I'm gonna have to go with the inch spacers to clear the header. Um, which is fine. Might be a little low, but I'll deal with it. Maybe, we'll see. I'll just smash the header tube in and move it up a little. Because we all know that don't matter, right? <laughs> and the bolts aren't long enough. <sighs> Shitty. Shitty. Trials and tribulations. Okay. Maybe we'll go a half an inch and see where they fall. Once it's actually bolted up into place. Just like that, you space the column down a half an inch. <laughs> okay, so with a little bit of persuasion, not really, I, I just pushed the shaft back up into the column a little bit. You can see the height, it's kind of hard to see, but um, you see I fit my hand. I had the joint on here already. By the way, ARP uh, bell housing bolts fits perfect. Some of you didn't know, I'm an ARP freak. I love ARP everything. <laughs> ARP as much as I freaking can. It is, uh, like I showed you that already, ARP, uh, yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's an addiction. Uh, what are you going to do? Oh, yeah, my other one. There you go. Oh, we're going to go over how to make a steering shaft. Now, you can just go buy a Flaming River one for $200 and $220, $200, whatever. Whatever the price of it was, it's, it's as much as their goddamn steering rack. Uh, if anybody recalls previous video, I got a, one of those hot deals on Amazon. I got my Flaming River manual rack for $130. I bought this. This is from, I don't know, whatever. It's just three quarter double D bar. I bought like three feet of it for $18 or whatever it is. Uh, I also got two Flaming River joints. One is... 28 spline I, I don't exactly remember what the flaming river manual rack spline size is but it's all over there you can score anyway to three quarter dd and the other one's three quarter to three quarter because the piece that goes into the column is three quarter so we're gonna go over making that real quick should be quick and easy uh you just got to get the joints bolted on where they need to be and you got to measure from joint to joint 
Um, remember, you got to measure. <laughs> don't measure from the face here. You got to measure from where it ends inside there. So you you would just measure, you know, right to this line, pretty much on both joints, and then um, you got to uh, hit the set screws in, see where they are, pull them back out, drill a little hole. Now you don't want to go through. You just want to drill a little cavity for those screws to sit in, so this thing won't pull out on you at 140 or even five miles an hour. Because even a five mile an hour wreck where you can't steer can be devastating. So you got to do that, and then I'll lock tight the screws back in, lock them all down, and then the steering shaft will be done. And then we'll go over the um, uh, bump steer kit. I'm not too familiar with setting bump steer, but from what I've read is you want the rack and the tie rods, when the car bounces, you want the tie rods to be, to go even with the tires. You get bump steer when your tie rods like this and your control arms like this, and they, they go on two different angles when the tire bounces. So from what I've seen is you gotta get it close to what the control arm does. Um, that will be left, I will get it close, but that will be left to the professionals when I bring the car to get aligned, corner balanced, and, and all the suspension set up. I don't know who I'm gonna have to do that yet, but uh, I gotta do some more research and everything. I have a feeling it's gonna be quite expensive to get done. All right, so here's everything laid out. I gotta stick these in the car. I don't know why those fuck are so long, but I'm gonna come down to the same length of these. I don't know. Um, so that's those two joints, upper, lower. These are the, um, these are the uh, offset rack bushings. Um, they're prothane. I can fucking never open these goddamn boxes. So, you can see, you know, there's an obvious difference there. So, we'll move the uh, rack up further. And four of those to put in with their grease. And then I get my package from Team Z. You know, I don't know, it's just a personal thing. I don't know about anybody else, but when you send me a package and the only thing in here is the part and some packing paper, which I already took out. Like, I mean, a receipt, sticker, directions, invoice, anything. I mean, if I didn't look at the shipping label, you would have fucking no idea where it came from. I mean, that's just, that's pretty shitty right there. I, that's just my opinion. I like to have invoices and stickers and shit like that so I can catalog my build and everything, but I guess at the end of the day it's the quality of the parts, not what the sticker is, right? But These aren't all that smooth. That one's smoother. Like, even the parts don't even say anything on them. <laughs> you know? Nothing. Not a, not a goddamn thing. If I ever went to go sell this, I'd be like, yeah, I promise it's TMZ. Uh, I can't give you a receipt or show you the part that's labeled. Uh, yeah, just take my word for it that it, it's not an eBay kit. Like, um, that's kind of, that's kind of fucking shitty. And they're all... You know, it's probably hard to tell, but you could see for a brand new fucking part. Really? Wow. Well, it is what it is. It's fucking going in the fucking car now. Wow, look how easy that ships off. So 
So you have all these different size spacers um, that you can build various lengths to push um, these bump steer kits down. Are those all the same size? Those look all the same size. Um, so here, you can see all these different size spacers. You know, and you, you, you just mix match them until you get uh, close to the same height. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to set these studs up into the car and um, well, we'll go from there and see where all these land. You can see my outer tie rod right there, or inner, I'm sorry. So if it were straight on the axle, you could see the difference. So if this tire were to go up and down, it would be at a different angle than the, the, the steering. So you got to... Uh, you gotta correct that. So we're gonna put the offset rack bushings in, hopefully bring it up a touch before we make the steering shaft. That would be pretty dumb, I think. I don't know, but. You gotta know what you wanna do. You gotta dedicate yourself to it. You gotta wake up thinking about it. Go to work thinking about it. Go to bed thinking about it. You gotta dream about it. I put my life on this, hand to God, other hand on my chest, I like these eyes, I don't play by the rules, no, no one does, I butter both sides of my toe slow pump just because, you chase the golden arrow and watch the that way, we'll put the rack up, I think, <laughs> sure, never done this before, alright, Bolts all the way at the bottom. That'll pull it. This is going to be some trial and error. Now the rack is up, I don't know, however much higher. What a fucking pain in the dick. Them fucking, uh, them fucking protein bushings are goddamn tight. Uh, sweat my ass off. But um, I really do think that passenger uh, knuckle is bent. I don't think it's supposed to be <laughs> at a different degree than um, the other side. Obviously, why would it? Steering. Everything should be symmetrical. Um, I'm gonna pull the top nut back off. I'm gonna take the wheel off. I'm gonna pull the top nut back off, drop the stud out, turn it. Maybe there's something gummed up in the hole because it's, you know, it's coned in. Um, so, maybe, maybe I'll have to put a new hub on that side. No big deal. It's an SM95 hub. 94 to 96, it's, the arm soups up. 97, the rest it's flat, but it kicks out the brakes a half an inch or the wheel backspace a half, something else is different about it but you want to run the earlier one. Um, 
unless of course you have inch shorter control arms and your backspacing really won't matter, I guess. I don't know. Fuck. Don't don't listen to me, I don't know what I'm talking about. So now that that's done, go ahead and um make the steering shaft. I'm gonna run this fucking thing up in there. I'm gonna put the joints in and just uh and they're tight. You obviously don't want things sticking all the way up through there or else this will never function right. So you kind of want to, I know it's hard to see, but you kind of want it right about there. So that's where you're going to measure from, probably from that from that flat to the flat of the other. Half measured out from what I got was six and three quarters inches. And the reason why I bought the three feet was in case I fucked up. <laughs> um, it was like a four dollar difference per foot. So I could probably make, you know, this is, what is this? It's two feet. So I can make four, not nah, three. So, um, obviously you don't want to fuck up that many times and then just look like a fucking fool. And I'm hoping to nail this on the first shot, so we'll see how this goes. What'd I say? Six and three quarters, right? fresh wheel. I have to bring out the danger. Don't try this at home. This was fucking something I did that was stupid. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was for, but it's fucking stupid. Put that death trap away before I get fucking killed. Gotta get some new blades. I did not know I was out. But there you go. Um, made my own steering shaft. Flaming River joints on it. Uh, at probably, I don't know, 50 bucks cheaper. Somewhere in there. 40 or 50 dollars cheaper than them. Um, then they sell this to you assembled and you see how easy this is I showed you you stick one end on each end where it's gonna go you measure so it's just sticking out right there and then you cut it and then you assemble it now where these screws land will leave a mark in this shaft I'm gonna put it in the car to make sure it's the right length and if it's the right length, I'm going to take this all back apart, and I'm going to take a drill bit, and I'm going to make a little cavity. Make a little hole, kind of, that those can sit in so they can't fucking move back and forth, and then I'll Loctite them in. Alright, you got you got to make sure to do that cavity, or else these screws can just slide on and off. Don't sit there and think screwing these things on tight is going to be enough. It's not. you got to put the cavity on it. Alright? She fits like a glove. Fits fucking perfect. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Saved myself fucking fifty dollars, and it fits fucking perfect. I uh, will take that. And it's not like I use cheaper fucking parts either, you know. So there you can see the mark from the bolt there too. So you want to drill both of those, both ends. You don't have to go crazy. That's it. All you gotta do. Something for the screw to sit in. <laughs> what a fucking pain in the ass that shit was. Um, sometimes it just fucking sucks. Bang my hand again. Killing me. I'm trying to get over the last thing, which I thought I broke my finger on. But, um, 
month later, it's still tender. Uh, that's how I know I'm getting older now. Shit fucking used to like heal in two days. It's taken a month now. It hurts like hell. Um, but it's all done. Steering's all set except for the quick really tough. But that's literally one bolt and then the five bolts for the steering wheel on it. And it's, it's all set. Um, fucking tired now. But that is in. So tonight we dropped the steering column a half an inch. Uh, made the shaft. Showed you how the guys measure that and, and drill the little dimples in there so the nuts can stay. The shaft is now in the car. Uh, it's all bolted up. I also showed you the bump steer kit install. Now, I showed you it's from Team Z, but you, you would have no fucking idea who it's from because uh, there's no markings, the anodizing is shit, and um, yeah, well, you, you know what I said earlier about it. But it's in the car, it's all that fucking matters. As long as the metal's good, I guess. Visually, it's gonna look like shit in probably a fucking season of driving it, but. It is what it is. So that's all done. I showed you some of the wiring. I really didn't touch on too much about how I had that wiring done through the computer. Um, I actually got the idea from uh, Matt Happel on Sloppy Mechanics. And what it was was he had the two-step wire go to the button. And when you press the button, you also had the trans brake set up as the same wire. So if you press that button, it would activate the two-step and the trans brake. So you would have two-step into the button, nitrous, uh, nitrous out to the trans brake, and when you go into the configure and tuner studio, you'd have uh, two-step as your wire. You know, you set that up, and then when you go over to trans brake, you when it's asking you to set up the wire, you do same as launch, which is the two-step. So when you hit the button, it activates both, all right? If you look up his YouTube video, it, it's a pretty good explanation. Um, so that's how I got that, and he shows you the bump box and all that. It's an older one on one of his Fairmonts. So I just wanna let you know that's how that was set up, and if you need further detail, where to look on his page. All I'm doing tonight, I'm fucking exhausted. <laughs> uh, my hands hurt, but we're all, oh. Let me show you the shaft first before I, I uh, tell you guys to pound sand so you can see it there a little bit no oh, not <sighs> yeah there you go right, it's all in now so it clears the header got a good amount of room between the header we did the offset rack bushings <laughs> That's the other thing I uh, we did tonight was the offset rack bushings. So there was a uh, a pretty good amount of work done tonight on just steering. It's a lot of shit. It, this is the stuff that takes time. You know, you're not going to see it in the video because I'm going to edit it all out and edit it down to you know 15, 20 minutes. But it took me a solid you know two and a half hours to do everything, three hours, if not a little more, give or take. It takes longer filming, because I gotta worry about positioning the camera. What's next? Next video. I don't know. You know, every time I have one of these videos, I don't know what I'm gonna do next. I had a guy on my Instagram ask about intercooler mounting, so I might make a video on that, because I gotta finish it up, it's half done, so I might make a video on that, showing how that's all done. Um, but that, that would be a quick 10 minute video because it would be easier to edit out. What else? I don't know. I need to go make some more money. I need to go make some more money so I can fucking put more money into this thing. Uh, the wife gave me an ultimatum. She wants kids the end of next year. This car needs to be done before the kids. So we're going to be uh, full steam ahead this winter. My goal right now is next September, September 2018. I told you guys I want to drive this car to uh, uh, Mustang Week in Myrtle Beach, about 1,500 miles, 1,300 miles each way, whatever it is. And then I want to drive it to North Carolina for Foxtoberfest, which I just saw this year. It was fucking sweet. I think it had like 470 Fox bodies there. So that's the goals. I don't even give a fuck about racing it. I just want to drive it and do fucking burnouts. That's it. Burnouts are fucking ice cream. 
Uh, take my wife out for a ride. Scare the fucking daylights out of her with it. But, um, other than that, yeah. So we're going to be full steam ahead. I, I got to start ordering stuff to finish the cooling on this. I got to order fans and a couple fittings and the hose. That Dash 20 shit, boy. That shit's fucking expensive. I think it's like, I want to say it's like fucking, it's like $60 a fitting. And it's like $50 a foot for the shit. Had I realized it before, I more than likely would have done aluminum tubing. And made a nice aluminum with just rubber couplers on each end, but a little late for that. I gotta do the cooling, I gotta order fans. Um, I gotta get, still gotta get a crank pull and get a belt on this. Once I get the cooling and I get a belt on this, um, then I could actually let it run. I can't let it run right now, because it's going to overheat, obviously, so I want to be able to let it run and actually get to full temp, idle, make sure everything fucking is copacetic. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're going to play it one day at a time to see uh, what I can afford to buy that week. You know, it is it is what it is. But like usual, make sure, give me a like, give me a comment, subscribe, tell your friends to subscribe. Follow me on uh, Instagram, at race status, all one word. No hashtags, no fucking underscores, nothing, just one word. Um, yeah, that's that. So I hope to see you guys back here when I release another episode. I will get this edited up, hopefully online tomorrow night, all right? Have a good night, guys.